As the Apostle Peter addressed the crowd on the day of Pentecost, he boldly declared in Acts chapter 2 and verse 22, and I quote, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and signs and wonders, which God did by him in the midst of you. We believe in miracles and that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. The days of miracles are not over. Jesus is still in the miracle business. Wherever you are at this time, the Moriah Miracle Center welcomes you to this, the Miracle Hour broadcast. It is time for your miracle. Today is the day of miracles. Today is the day for your miracle. We invite you now to stay tuned and be blessed. A miracle awaits you. Welcome to the program that you look forward to on this wonderful Thursday evening. The program that comes to you under the auspices of the Moria Miracle Center. It's called the Miracle Hour Broadcast. I am filling in for the Reverend Knowles McCall, the senior pastor and uh, the host pastor of the show and uh, senior pastor of the Moria Miracle Center. And um, we are happy that we can be with you one more time to share with you the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are interested in contacting us, we are located at 119 Northside Road, Moriah. Or if you are traveling from Scarborough, it's just before the Moriah Police Station. And if you are coming from Moriah, the village itself, heading towards Scarborough, it is uh, located just after the police station. If you want to contact us by telephone, you can call telephone number 660-0771 or 684-3318. Or you can write us at uh, our email address, mariahmcenter at gmail.com. Just at the end of this program, we will again give you those details and um, we'll tell you as well of some of our services that we have for the week as a program in the church. But I want to speak to you this evening. Again, I'm Alvin Walker filling in for the Reverend Knowles McCall. And just to let you know that he sends you his love and regard, um, I'm sharing with you from the book of Mark's Gospel, chapter number 5. And I want to take it up from verse number 21. The Bible tells us, And when Jesus had crossed over again in the boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered about him, and he stayed by the seashore. Uh, verse 22 says, And one of the synagogue officials named Jairus came up and uh, upon seeing him fell at his feet. And uh, he began to entreat him earnestly saying, says, My little daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. And he went off with him and a great multitude was following him and pressed in on him. Verse 25 tells us, which is where I really want to zero in from. But just to give it a backdrop, I went from verse 21. And a woman who had had a hemorrhage, or as the King James Version puts it, an issue of blood for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of, of, of many physicians. If the King James Version says suffered much at the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not helped at all but rather had grown worse after hearing about jesus came up in the crowd behind him and 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 touched his cloak for she thought if i just touch his garment 
I shall get well. And immediately the flow of blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And immediately Jesus, uh, uh, perceiving in himself that the power uh, proceed, proceeded from him, had gone forth, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched me? Uh, who touched my garment? And all the disciples said to him, You see the multitude pressing in on you, and you see who touched my garment? And he looked around to see the woman who had done this, but the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. And for this next few moments, I just want to speak to us on a theme, make your miracle, don't wait for a miracle. So let me say that again, make your miracle, don't wait for a miracle. Father, we want to thank you this evening for your word to our heart. We pray, God, that someone who is sharing this word today, who is at the point where they need a touch from you, maybe because they are sick in body, and maybe they have been there for quite a while, and have been hoping beyond hope. Lord, have been reasoning beyond reason. Lord, have had a, the, 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 the whole hope trashed because of what they might have heard from the doctors. I pray, God, today that even as your word go forth, that some faith will be kindled in this person's life and that they are going to make a miracle today as opposed to be waiting on one. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we're talking about making a miracle, don't wait for a miracle. Make your miracle, don't wait for a miracle. The Bible tells us here of uh, Jesus Christ that just came over the Ghanarines, as it were, Genesaret. And he had just dealt with the, the man with the demons, as we would have heard last time when I was here, we spoke concerning that. And the Bible tells us that after Jesus had dealt with this man, that they, he went on, and as he went on, there, there came a man, because they said that when Jesus had done uh, the miracle to the man of healing him of those demons, that the people in the area got upset and they say, no, you need to go from here and whatever. Jesus didn't fight with them. He decided that he would leave, and he went and elsewhere and it, it's always interesting to note that at times when people do not want you or people are rejecting you as the case might be from where you are that there is always someone who is on the other side who is waiting for you and so Jesus Christ is here trying to he, he has just performed this miracle with this guy um, casting out these demons and at the end of the day the people are, have literally chased him and he, he obliged he, he just simply left but as he went, the Bible said, and he got to the other side, there came, as it were, this man, Jairus by name, and said to him, my daughter is at home sick, and I need you to come to my house and, and, and to deal with her, pray with her, so that she will live. You see, Jairus must have, have, have known Jesus, and if he didn't know him, uh, at least he, he knew of him. In fact, the, the, the way the scripture unfolds itself, it seems to suggest to us that, that Jairus knew Jesus and what he was capable of because he came to him and in no uncertain terms, he directed, directly said to him, Sir, if you will come to my house because my daughter is sick, if you come, I know she will live. And that's the kind of confidence that we have in Jesus Christ, that once he's on the scene, everything is going to take a turn for the better. You see, all things that are dead will come to life. Things that are, 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 are weak will get strong because of the, the, the fact that Jesus Christ is on the scene. And so Jairus knew that. So Jairus said, if you come to my house, my daughter is sick, but if you come to my house, I know that she will be made well. The Bible said that somehow, when they look at the context of the scripture, there was no argument by Jesus as to why should I come to your house or any of the things like that. Again, maybe for some reason, there might have been some sort of a connection between Jairus and Jesus, that they, they probably were familiar with each other. And so the Bible said that Jesus just simply went along with him. Now, as they were going along, the Bible tells us of, a, of, a, of another situation. Now, Jesus is going to Jairus' home. That's his intent. He has left 
with the intention that I'm going to Jairus' home for the purpose of, of dealing with his sick daughter that she would live while he is on his way. He is going to be interrupted by a lady who the Bible claims that she was sick for 12 long years. Now, I, I want us to be able to picture this. Now, it's not easy to sick for a day. And some of us know what it is to feel sick for a day, to be sick for two days, maybe even for a week. But it, it, it's another thing to be sick for half a year or even a year. This lady was sick for 12 long years. The Bible said that she was hemorrhaging. As one, translate, one translation puts it, she was hemorrhaging. Another translation suggests that she had an issue of blood. Whatever the issue of blood was. Some people believe that it might have been cancer. Some others believe that uh, there might have been other things. But the, the fact remains is that the Bible says that she was sick. This lady had an issue, she was hemorrhaging, this lady had a problem with her blood. The Bible also tells us that this lady, she seemed to have had some money because the Bible said that she spent all that she had. And I tell you what, I believe, I don't believe that she waited until the 12th year to start spending. I believe that from the very moment she found out, so we could say from year one, maybe not the very instant, but sometime during that year one, because she still probably told herself like many people do, if, if, if I can catch this thing early, if I can spend what I have now, maybe things are going to change. And so she had that confidence that maybe whatever money that she had would have been able to take care of a sick condition. And I tell you what, you see, the thing is because there are a lot of people in this world today who believe that the, the nice big fat banking account or their, their, their much money is going to be able to help them when they get sick. Oh yes, that's true. It might help. At some point in time, it might bring you some relief as it were. But the, the, the real thing, sir, madam friend, if the only way you can really be healed and be set free from your sick condition is if you were to come into contact with the man, Christ Jesus. So the Bible tells us that this lady was sick for 12 long years. The Bible also informs us that this lady spent all all that she had she spent all the, the money that she had and as I tell you before she must have had some good money because the Bible tells us it's what for 12 long years that this one was sick and I believe the Bible didn't say how how soon she started the Bible didn't say how long she was spending the money but she spent the money and the Bible said that she was sick for 12 long years so I would want to believe of my own opinion that they, 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 they as far as the ladies concerned that she might have spent money for those 12 long years but here what the bible says with all the money that she was spending she did what 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 most people will do and should do consult with your physician go to your doctor if there is a problem there is nothing that says that you should not go to your doctor in fact as soon as you discover that there is some issue with you you should check with your physician check in with your doctor hear what the doctor have to say because at the end of the day it could mean the difference between catching something in the early and dealing with it than waiting for it to reach a final stage when it is going to be very very difficult to deal with or sometimes impossible to deal with so she had gone to the doctor as the Bible said, she was not a woman who sat down home and boiled some bush and say, oh, the bush going to help me. Like some people like to do. You go for your bush remedies. You do your different things. I have no problem with that. If that is what you want to try, fine, no problem. Go ahead. But she didn't do that. She decided that she was going to go to her physician. And she went to the physician. And the physician maybe gave her a, a sense of hope because saying to her, we could help you. I believe we could help you. Your situation is, is one that we, we know of. We have seen this before. Others have come in and we have helped them. And, it, and, 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 and so we know we can help you. As sometimes the doctors do tell you, they give you this hope and know that everything is going to be all right. I am your doctor and I have seen this before. I've dealt with this before. How many times have you hear, heard your, your doctor or doctors say that? We have dealt with this before. Yeah, we could deal with this. And, and you keep spending your money, you keep spending your money, but you're not getting any better. Uh, and you just keep spending your money, keep spending your money. And as this lady did, at one point in time, when she spent all that she had, then finally she was told, you know, maybe we really can't help you because she has no more money to pay. You know, when you tell a doctor, you know, doc, um, whatever I had and was spending, it's now done and my insurance would not cover me anymore. I am unable to pay my insurance and they have stopped covering me or whatever sad story you tell the doctor. At the end of the day, the doctor has to live. And, and so he makes a decision and oh, well, maybe I could send you down the road by another doctor or probably a specialist. Now, all of a sudden, a specialist 
before he could handle it. He can do it. But I tell you what, they are there. They are doing their job. God bless the doctors and fantastic. You do your job, but people, doctors, let me tell you something. Don't fool the people. If you can't help them, tell them straight up you cannot help them. Send them, direct them. Don't just take what they have and then leave them, you know. Tell them you can't help them. But the thing is that we, we are grateful for you, doctors. You're doing a wonderful job in our nation. Continue to do your work. But the Bible said that this lady, she spent all that she had. And when she had spent all that she had, the Bible said that she grew nothing better, but rather she grew worse. Let me tell you something. You see, there is this thing that when we believe that we have money, we, we the, the, the last place we're going to turn to is God. Because as far as I'm concerned, my money could help me. As far as I'm concerned, I will get by with my money. I, I don't need God for this. I could handle this because I, I could just write a check and I can pay a doctor and I can get it all dealt with. And thank God. You see, I, I like God because God is a God who he's always there waiting. You know, the, the Bible said the money finish. It came to an end. It done. Listen, this lady was in a position where she had no money more money so you, you could imagine this lady in this position she has no more money and she is in a position where she's still sick she needs help the physicians are not going to help her anymore because she has no money what kind of situation to find yourself in you see the only thing you could probably just do this fall up and wait to die because your situation is not getting any better by 12 years you're probably weaker than you, you started and whatever medication that they gave you probably to ease the pain when that is done because you have no more money to buy uh, any more money to buy anything at the end of the day you are just going to be there and you have to fight with the pain however you can fight with it and probably wish to god that you will die but the Bible said that this woman, she had spent all that she had. And thank God, because the Bible said the same thing with the prodigal son. When he had left home, he just enjoyed spending his money with riotous living. And you see, there is a time when you have money. Some people don't think about God when they, they, their needs are met and all things are nice and fancy and everything just seems to be dandy done. You know, uh, we don't have time for God because everything is nice. And we, we, we tend to believe and tend to think that God is a God uh, that we should need him only when we are in trouble, only when we are in difficulty, only when we need financial help, only when we need a healing. That's the only time we could we could we, we should really check for God. But let me tell you something. That's not the only time we should check for God. You should check for God when all those things I've listed a while ago is good in your life. But let me tell you this. Even if that's the only time you check in for God, I tell you what, God check in for you all the time. So even at that point in time in your life when you figure that all you have is finished and there is nothing else you can do and all of a sudden now we get this bright idea, turn to God. Even then God doesn't despise you. He's still there for you, ready for you. So the Bible said that this woman spent all that she had and then finally Jesus came into the coast the area where she is and um, the Bible said when she heard about Jesus when she heard that Jesus was there uh, and it seems to suggest to me that this lady this woman with the issue of blood she knew about Jesus and if she didn't know about Jesus then it meant whoever told her about Jesus took time out to mention to her that Jesus is a man who if you would ever get your situation to him he could fix it Maybe they said to her, he's a miracle working God. He could change your situation there. They might have tried to convince her and say to her, listen, we know your situation. Maybe it was a friend and the friend knew her situation and said, you know what? You have spent all that you have. You have nothing else to lose. Why not go and let Jesus uh, pray for you? Why not go and let Jesus touch you? Why not go and get healed? And, and the lady probably said to herself, you know, it probably makes sense. I would probably do that. But then she, the, she considered maybe the issue of blood and Jesus is a holy man. And, and one commentator suggests that the issue of blood that she carried, if anyone had touched her, um, any holy person would have touched her, it would have made them unholy. And so she probably saying to herself, why should I do this to this holy man? Why should I allow him to touch me? Because if, if, I, if I allow him that to happen, then he's going to become unholy. And, and I don't want that to happen. So she, she has a situation where she could probably go to him, but she's thinking, you know, maybe if I do, this is what is going to happen. So she has found herself betwixt, or maybe not. 
Maybe she just figured, you know, um, I am going to, to, to go to him and I'm going to get help. But I'm not going to, 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 to be the one to cry out to him, to call out to him. Uh, most people would have gone to him and, and cry out to him and maybe go up and say to him, Jesus, this is my situation and I want you to touch me. I want you to heal me because I've spent all my money and all kind of thing. And the situation has not gotten better. The doctors have eaten me out and all, all I end up with is still just the dregs. And I'm still, as it were, um, on with my situation. My problem is still there. And so maybe it is that she was in that position. Who knows? But the Bible said that the lady decided that she was going to accept explore this this opportunity of a lifetime because uh, when your back is against the wall and you have nothing to lose then you can throw um, cast everything to the wind as it will because tell you the truth if she if she went to Jesus and she she approached him and he would, would turn her back or he did decide that he's not going to heal her she had nothing to lose because she would have been in the same position nowhere better nowhere worse still in the same position but she decided you know what I am going to probably give this a try and she did not win Wait for the opportunity for Jesus to call her. She did not wait for the opportunity for, for, for uh, or seek the opportunity to go to him and explain her story. Maybe it is that she was weak and she didn't have the strength to get to him to do that. Or maybe it is that she, 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 she because of her condition, she figured that she might have made him um, unholy. Or maybe it is that she, she probably was in a place where she told herself, you know, I am too embarrassed with my sickness to go to, to God, uh, to go before Jesus with you see because there are some people who tend to think that they are too embarrassed with their sickness to walk into the church and to to solicit the help of the church uh for for healing from god and to walk in the church and to declare to them you know i need help i need help pray for me because some people believe that maybe you have a the aids virus or you have some kind of a terminal illness maybe cancer or whatever the case is and you try to start telling yourself you know i am too embarrassed to go on to to report this thing to anybody for anybody to hear so I'm not going to go to the church and some people are like that this woman maybe she was in a situation where she didn't want to tell anybody about her, her situation but let me tell you this the Bible said that this lady decided to do something she see I am not going to wait for a miracle I am going to make a miracle and the Bible said that this lady decided to press in behind the crowd and she just decided to go in behind the crowd and the Bible said that she just to stretch out her hands and she said if I could only just but touch the helm of his garment she knew and she knew that God was going to do it for her that Jesus Christ would have healed her and the Bible said that she reached out her hand she touched the helm of his garment and she was made whole my God you could imagine this lady after 12 long years of suffering with this finally she meets Jesus finally she has touched his garment finally she's made whole and she probably said to herself if I had only done this before I would have not only just been healed but I would have been healed and rich now she's healed and without money you say healed and poor but the thing is that give she would not take anything away for being healed and poor she wouldn't mind that at all just to be healed is what she's most concerned about and the bible said she made her miracle she just pressed in behind him and she said you know what i am not going to wait for jesus to touch me i will touch him and oh my god i tell you the truth is that there are times when we as um and let me just talk to the christian community for a while there are times when we as believers we get excited because we are in the presence of god and we're not waiting for god to touch us but we just go to uh, hanging in there tapping in there and getting into the presence of god and we just want to touch him all over because we know we know that we know that we know if we could just touch God in a time of worship and praise and we know that God is going to touch us back and that's what the lady did you see she she she, she said I'm going to make my miracle I'm not gonna wait for a miracle I'm gonna make my miracle and she went in and she she just touched Jesus's garment and immediately the Bible said Jesus said who touched me the disciples said to him, what do you mean who touched you? There are so many people thronging you all over, touching you for all kinds of reasons. Some of them are just speculating uh, whether or not you are real. Some of them probably touching you to say that I have touched a great man as the case might be. He says, no, 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 no. That's not the kind of touch I'm referring to. I'm talking when somebody touched me, virtue left my body. Oh my God, today, whatever situation you're in, ma'am, sir, you're sick and you probably have heard the, the worst of news from your doctors that I'm saying to you, if you could touch Jesus right now, your situation will change for the the honor and glory of Almighty God. Would you reach out your hands and touch him? Oh, the Bible said, the, Jesus said to her daughter, thy sins be forgiven you. You are healed. Now remember, that was not the ultimate reason why Jesus went that way. He was going to Jairus' home. Thank God 
that Jesus passed away. I was not, she, the, the woman with the issue of blood was not in his focus. It, he, she was not in it, his intent for coming that way. But tell you what, even when Jesus is passing, even though you are not in his focus, even though he's not, uh, he's not, uh, you are not his intent for passing that way, if you reach out to him, he will touch you. And I'm saying to you right now, wherever you are, right there, on your bed, lying down in your bed of affliction, probably waiting for them to, to start drinking coffee or cocoa tea and eating some bacon, salt fish as the case might be and having a week because you have already made up your mind you're going to die. I'm saying to you, sir, it's not a bad thing to leave this world, but if you're going to do, make sure that you leave Jesus in your heart. You see, he can touch your body and heal you right now, or he can take you into eternity and give you a body that is never going to sick again. Either way, you're going to be made whole. I want you just to bow your heads with me right where you are. And I want you to pray, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I ask, oh God, that you will touch that man, touch that woman, that boy, that girl. Maybe that person in the hospital bed that is hearing this message and has just awakened some, some interest in, in your son, Jesus Christ, and have decided that they are going to exercise their faith today. Lord, as they exercise faith in you, that you can heal them, that you can make a difference in their life. I pray, God, that you will touch them right now from the cross of the head right down to the sole of the feet we speak to cancers and we speak to cancer cells we speak oh God, to diabetes and to hypertension and every other sickness that seems to be plaguing the body of man we we speak to it right now and we declare your healing in the name of jesus upon every person who is waiting for a miracle and we thank you now in jesus' name amen and amen we want to thank you again you have been listening to the miracle our broadcast which comes to you under the auspices of the Moriah America Center whose host pastor and senior pastor is the Reverend Nose McCall. I am Alvin Walker just filling in for him. Remember if you want to contact us by that telephone you can call 660-0771 or you can call 684-3318 or you can write us at email mariahmcenter at gmail.com. The, the services for the week is Sunday morning 9.30 a.m. We have our usual Sunday morning worship on Tuesday at 5 a.m. or morning cry Tuesday evening um, at 6 we have converts class for all the new believers those who accepted Jesus in their life over the past uh, weeks or so and then we have our Bible study on prayer meeting um, following that on Wednesday morning it's prayer and fast remember you got to stay strong, stay sweet in the spirit. And remember, if you are looking for a place to fellowship, you can check us out at 119 Northside Road. And it's the Moriah Miracle Center. On behalf of myself and, of course, the man you love to hear and see on your program, the Reverend Rose McCall, I'm saying thank you and may the good Lord bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bless the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to rejoice. I want you to give God praise. I want you to give God thanks. Welcome to this, the Miracle Hour broadcast. <laughs>